I, mean, I can never I've worried about this new microphone I hope it's okay hello everybody and welcome back to the stream let's put me big for a minute um so yes uh today so last time on the stream we got uh we did loads um we got a thing so I could control my overlays from my stream deck um, with get requests to the server and uh, we added a chatbot um, feature so that the server, the thing can listen to the chat and when people go bang Perry, um, it will display the image. And uh, if I run the application, make myself little again. And so now um, I've created a, a, a dedicated port number 25293. And so if I go into that like that and say OK and refresh that and then go bang Perry in the chat, Perry appears. So that is working now. Um, and I can turn Perry off again from my stream deck, except I haven't updated the link in my stream deck. So I need to do that. So that's 25293. Don't put a tab in there. And let's get rid of that again. And then... Go away. Host colon 25293. Oh, I know what's going wrong with that. 
it's because it's not on HTTPS and so it's silently failing. And that should now be making Perry go away again. It's actually displaying something else. And I can't make Perry go away at all now. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Um, so yes, there is a chatbot in this code now. And this chatbot, um, if we go into the bot here, um, I've got my Twitch username and my Twitch access token on. I've stuck those in environment variables on this PC. So they're getting picked up from there. And I used um, Twitch apps dot TMI. And I don't know what that is. Um, but yes, there's this token generator. Um, and I just don't know how any of this works. I don't know what this is supposed to do. Um, so I'm going to implement the proper OIDC implicit flow um, in the application so that when it starts up, it can just redirect you to Twitch and say, hey, um, do the things, launch the things, and, uh, and take you through the authentication process. So... Um, bring that back up and we'll go to getting tokens OIDC. Um, so you have to do a get request to HTTPS um, and requested claims and scopes and all this sort of stuff. Um, so we've got claims here. Each claim describes a piece of data you want to get about the user authorizing your application. Um, claims parameter is a JSON object. We do 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 in a request the claims parameter would be claims equals that, 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 that. You can request the following claims. Email, email verified, picture, preferred username, updated at. So I don't actually want any of those. I just want some scopes. Um, user edit, user read, email. Um, and so for this, I just want um, chat edit, chat read, and open ID. And that should then bring me back to the right place. So if I go to dev.twitch.tv, Um, which is here, and manage this, exactly match the redirect URI. Okay, so we'll call this um, Twitch Auth. Twitch callback. I'm not a robot. Hooray! Yep, traffic light, traffic light, traffic light, traffic light. And save. And there we go. So I've got that 
is my callback URL. Five different potential engagements tonight. Have a good time. That's all right, buddy. Thanks very much for dropping by. See you next time. Um, so... We've got the dashboard here. Um, right, so we're going to create a new service in here. Um, and we're going to call it Twitch. Um, or then Twitch off. Um, we can stop running and we can go prop string token. And then in our startup, we're going to say services.add singleton twitch off so that that can get passed around the place and then in our dashboard we can say at inject twitch off twitch off like that put an extra line up there And then here we can say if string dot is null or empty twitch auth dot token. And now how do we do a redirect in Blazor? Blazor page redirect. Navigation managers navigate to method. Microsoft really need to work on the um, oh Blazor University. What's this? This looks useful. The navigation manager service can be injected in a Razor file. Okay. So we can also at inject navigation manager, navigation manager like that. And then we can say navigation manager dot to absolute URI. And then we want to get the URI from somewhere and I'm gonna put this into Twitch auth as well. So we're going to have um, public string get authentication URI. And we're going to have I configuration. Configuration is going to get injected. And then grabbing this from the Twitch things, we're going to say return dollar boom control V like this. Um, and we'll say var client ID equals. Um, underscore configuration dot get get value string and this is going to be twitch colon client id and var redirect uri equals underscore configuration dot get value string 
twitch colon redirect URI or just HTTP colon slash slash local host colon uh, 25293 slash twitch underscore callback like so. Right, so client ID and redirect URI. So response type. Um, token ID token returns, return an access token and an ID token. Token plus ID token. Client with a valid access token or only needs added information. Right, so we want token and ID token. Token plus ID token. And we don't want any claims, so we should be all right without that and then our scopes so scopes is the things that your token will let you do and this I want to be able to read chat messages and write chat messages so I want chat colon edit and chat colon read and you might think that chat colon edit would imply chat colon read, but in my experience of scopes, you would be wrong. So there we go, that should be the authentication URI that we need. Navigation manager dot to absolute URI twitch auth dot get authentication URI. And then Sorry, I'm reading something on the wrong screen. Getting tokens OIDC. there and state equals something scopes says it must include open id yes it does very good point um, so let's jump back over to there open id plus thank you very much
and then this is going to send us back to a page which has got a hash inside it. So I'm going to add a new laser component page and call it Twitch Callback. And if we go into here, so navigation manager dot URI So this is our Twitch callback page. So we're going to do at inject navigation manager navigation manager. Do we have any this dot no um oh here we go override on initialized this dot yeah so i need navigation manager to get the uri so we're going to save our uri equals navigation manager dot uri like so and then i'm just going to set a breakpoint here and then i'm going to go to localhost 2593 slash twitch underscore callback hash access token equals foo. Right, I can't access the hash from from here, which is bad. I need to be able to access that hash. So What about using the authorization code flow? So this then comes back with a question mark code equals authorization code. So this I could deal with from just a handler because I can see this on the server. And then I can get an access token. Except there I need to pass my client's secret. And really, I don't want to be using the client's secret if I can avoid it. So, read. Um, what's the stuff after the hash called in front end development? I have no idea. Um, hash content. Google is really just terrifying. Um, 
um, browser URI helper. Oh, there we go. That looks better. So if I say at inject browser URI helper, Laser browser URI helper WebAssembly URI helper. Again, it's Sync Fusion. Search Google for that. IntelliSense to the rescue. URI helper is a type which is not valid in the given context. No, nope, it's not that. Using injected URI helper, that's not what we want. So WebAssembly URI helper. So navigation manager. Is it that this page can't access that stuff? It is, isn't it? That's what it is. Okay. So I might have to write some actual JavaScript in here. Um, see if Blazard has got anything. Type ahead, menu, video, toast local storage there add blazer local storage right so we can create if i put uh directory in here called twitch underscore callback and then a HTML file in here called index.html So we have got window dot location dot gonna take this page out of here like this.
JavaScript location hash. So hash there gets you the part of the thing there. Console.log window.location.hash like so. If we go back to localhost slash twitch underscore callback hash access underscore token equals foo. And that is not being found. That's because I actually need the index.html because I'm only using static files. And then my console, I get my access token equals foo like that. Okay, so let's stop this and I'm going to rename this to twitch underscore callback and I'm going to move it up into dub 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 root like that and then get rid of the directory. So yes, um, if anyone missed what was going on there, um, the static files middleware for ASP.NET Core um, doesn't resolve directories to index.html. There is a separate thing um, for doing that, which I believe is this use file server. Um, so that if you do app.use file server, then it will hit, um, if you've got a directory with an index.html file in it, it will pick that up and it will serve that index.html as a root thing, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to use static files and twitch callback.html. And so our hash is going to be um, hash ID token equals something, ampersand access token equals something. Um, So we can save const hash equals window dot location dot hash dot substring one. Um, and then we can say const parts equals hash dot split. ampersand and then we can say for um, const part in parts I need to remind my I haven't written in JavaScript for such a long time JavaScript for in of Creates a loop iterating. Yeah, so that's the one we want. Const part of parts. Um, we can say const pair equals part dot split equals and limit it to two, I believe. So limit the number. So yeah. We want a maximum of two. And then we can say if pair zero, ax 
access token triple equals JavaScript uh, window dot local storage dot set item twitch underscore access underscore token um, pair one make sure that pair one's actually got something in it auth service so we're going to bring in that um, NuGet package for blazard there we go local storage nice and helpfully at the top install In our startup, we can go up to here and we can say services.add blazard local storage. And then blazard local storage. inject any local storage service into twitch auth i local storage service Do, 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 do. I don't like doing that like that. I'm going to go back to dashboard. Like so. And then we're going to inject the local storage service into here at inject i local storage service local storage service and then we can say var access token equals local storage service dot get item of string async twitch underscore access underscore token say if string dot is null or empty access token make this async await this
which auth dot token equals access token. Right. So we have got that in there. It's being passed across. We're using an HTML page to set it there. So I'm going to go to here and change this to .html and do the I'm not a robot dance again and save. So that will now work. And then uh, Twitch auth. Um, get authentication URI. Which callback dot HTML. URI helper. URI dot escape URI string so we're going to escape that URI string there which is what you want to do Field can be made read only, so we should do that. Okay, and then well, let's just we'll set a breakpoint here and we'll just. Um, Go into launch settings.json and that's going to go to uh, 25293 and we'll just hit this. So JavaScript interop calls cannot be issued at this time. This is because the component is being statically rendered. When pre-rendering is enabled, JavaScript interop calls can only be performed during the on after render async lifecycle method. Okay. So we will change this to on after render async and try running this again. This is complicated. So did not do that. So 
authentication URI copy value. Let's try taking that breakpoint out. Nope, it was not happy about that. Why was it not happy about that? I'm guessing this is dot navigate two. Yes, okay. I was just calling the wrong thing. Right, let's try this. Missing client ID because I don't have a value, but that's good. This is all good. That's progress. Um, right, hold on just one moment. Uh, manage. And my client ID is this. Um, I'm going to just hard code this into the application. Um, so Twitch auth uh, private const string client ID equals that because the client ID is not secret. Is it? I don't know. Somebody tell me if the client ID is supposed to be a secret. I'm guessing it's not because you're passing it in a URL so you know that's that's the thing there. Um, Cool beans. Okay, so I'm not doing that on here, but what I'm going to do is up on my other screen, um, I'm going to go to local host colon uh, 25293 slash dashboard and authorize. that and then down here oh it's not going to set it into the local storage on the right thing is it excuse me just one moment Um, I am making a um, Twitch overlay bot that runs locally on your machine, Vinyl Warmth, um, and allows you to display Perry um, amongst other things. Enter the code found in your Authenticator app or you can request the code via SMS. If you've lost your phone, please contact Twitch support. I haven't lost my phone, it's downstairs. Um, so hold on just one moment, I'm just going to go and get my phone.
Right. So, and moving this back up off the screen here, and this token expires in this much time, and then we're going to go bump, 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 and submit. And that has now done this callback here. So if I go to the application section here and look in local storage, we have a Twitch access token which has been set there. So now if I go back to dashboard, I now have a valid authenticated Twitch access token which is in my application. Hurrah for that. Um, so yes, let's jump back to here and we'll refresh this and then we'll turn it on and then we'll do Perry Perry and that's doing that thing there. But no, um, if I do bang Perry in the chat, <coughs> then I can make Perry appear on the screen. The idea is to, um, you can download this application and run it on your machine and then you point a browser thing at it in OBS Studio or whatever you're using. Um, and you can use it to display images um, or play sounds over the Twitch stream. Um, and you can set it up so that people with a chatbot can, um, in they can sort of go bang Perry um, and make things appear on the screen as well. And it'll all be nicely packaged up um, and this will look very different and it won't have the Blazor test pages and things on it and it's going to be awesome. Um, but mainly it's just a way to sort of work with um, Blazor and do something interesting with it and do something sort of Twitch related with it which I thought would be quite cool. Um, so yeah, okay that's good. Now the issue that we have with that though is that we've got the, um, where's the bot? There's the Twitch bot. Right. And so this can get Twitch auth, Twitch auth injected. But until such time as that, oh, let me turn the overlay off. Until you've gone through the dashboard and authenticated with Twitch and bounced back and got the access token and all that sort of stuff, because we're now going to use that access token, um, that's not going to work. Also, I need to get the username out of there somehow, um, which is probably what I require the claims for. I don't know. Um, we'll come back to that in a moment. But this is not going to work properly now. So what we're going to do is in Twitch Auth um, we're going to add a um, public event action token set and we're going to change this to a property with a backing field and we're going to say token set dot invoke. So now when the token is set, 
it will fire an event. And then we can jump back into Twitch bot. And we can say underscore Twitch auth dot token set plus equals Twitch auth on token set. And then in here, we can copy all of this stuff down to here. I'm just going to hard code this to Mark Rendell for a minute and then we'll work out how to get it from the right stuff. And then access token is going to be underscore twitch auth dot token. And then credentials is going to stop being read only. And client is going to stop being read only. get shot of all of that stuff and then in here We can move this up to here. Like so. Right, so I'm going to remove all my breakpoints and then I'm just going to set a breakpoint back into here. And I'm going to run this again. And my breakpoint has been triggered. And so this token is set. So that, and yay, that has worked. It works, it's alive. Brilliant. Um, so we have a login process and on the dashboard side of things, um, you don't, you barely see, you don't see anything once it's logged in because it's got the access token now in um, storage. Um, so, ba -ba -bum. so that access token is going to have expiry on it. Um, so if I go to jwt.io, because the access token is going to be um, debugger. So if I go to um, local storage on here and I edit value and do copy, if I put that into here, no, that's just an access token. Right, it's the other token, it's the ID token. 
that we want. So I'm going to go back to here um, and say else if pair zero ID token window dot local storage dot set item twitch underscore ID underscore token pair one. And then I'm going to delete this so that we can go through that again. And then we'll run this. So this now should bounce through the authentication bit. Oh, that's the other thing. Twitch callback needs to do that. Stop this. Twitch callback. Um, and then we can say window.location dot replace slash dashboard like so Sharper getting a bit upset with my stuff there. Right, local storage. So we've got a Twitch ID token and a Twitch access token. I'll close this and do a refresh here. Stop. Go away. Back to here. Run it again. And then we just go through this. There we go. Very, very quick bounce to Twitch and back again. And now those um, tokens have been set and I've got this. And if I copy this and go back to that jwt.io here and there we go brilliant that's completely brilliant um, Okay. So we've got our claims here. Um, preferred username. Is what we're going to use from that. So um, Twitch auth, uh, we are going to add a method to this and say public void set token um, string set tokens, string ID token, string access token. And then we can just change this back to a get private set.
and we can say token equals access token and token set dot invoke like that. Whoops. And so now we just need to get the data out of the um, ID token. And so we can, let's do this the fun and interesting way. Private string um, pass uh, username string ID token. So if we jump back over to this JWT, you see that the um, token is split into three sections with dots. And so we can say var parts equals id token dot split on dot if parts dot length is less than three return null. And you do that. Um, and then part one now will have the the main chunk of the token inside it and so we can say um, base 64 dot um, decode from UTF-8 decodes the span of UTF-8 encoded text represented as base64 into binary data. Base64.decode Convert dot from base64 string. This is the one that I want because I'm just going to create a byte array because I'm not that bothered about it. So we're going to say um, var bytes equals uh, parts one. And then we'll say var json equals um, encoding dot u utf8 dot get string bytes and then we can pass this as json um, so we're going to say json document dot pass So this is giving us, this is the new system.txt.json deserializer, and this is a super um, efficient uh, JSON thing. And so what we want is for it to have a field preferred underscore username. So json.rootElement.... Get string JSON dot root element dot get property dot get string JSON dot root element dot uh, 
So if dot try get property like that. And then down here, we are going to have a prop string question mark username with a private set. Return username property dot get string. Otherwise, we're going to return null and then up here we can say username equals um, pass username id token like so and then if we go back to dashboard we can say var id token equals await local storage service dot get item of string async twitch underscore id token string dot is null or empty id token otherwise twitch auth dot set tokens id token access token like so And let's set a breakpoint in here. And debug through this. So there's my ID token. Parts. Oh, the input is not a valid base64 string as it contains a non-base64 character. Ooh. Well, that's not right. Run this again. Okay, so parts one. Copy value. And then base 64. Okay, can anyone see why .NET would be saying that is not a valid base64 string? As it contains a non-base64 character. More than two padding characters or an illegal character among the padding characters. Okay, tools. Um, convert dot from base64 string.
All right, so it's being sent without padding. Um, base 64 padding. The length of output encoded string must be a multiple of three. If not, the output will be padded with additional pad characters. So, in here, um, we can say var payload equals parts one, uh, while payload dot length mod three isn't zero. Payload plus equals equals. And then we will run this up again. So payload, I view this now. This is super weird. Payload dot length. That is a multiple of three. C sharp base sixty four padding. So that the length is a multiple of four. Change that to four. Trying to work out if I've ever seen a base 64 string. Um, still busting. Oh, that's because I've done that wrong and I've put the wrong thing in there. Payload. And so now I've got my text. And now I've got my JSON. And that does that. And that's that's now working through there. OK, good. Um, and so then in the Twitch bot, we can say username equals underscore Twitch auth dot username. And we've gotten rid of that hard coded thing there. Um, So we've still got that hard coded there. I guess that probably wants to be the same username. Um, let's just do twitch auth dot username to lower. Um, and run this up again. And get 
rid of this. And let's uh, refresh this and turn it back on and do Perry in here. And that has not worked. We've gone through a lot of online help today. Um, right. So let's go into Twitchbot. Uh, run. Remove all line breakpoints. Set this here. Okay, so we've got the thing. Um, let's refresh that. Turn you off. Turn you back on. Perry. There he is. Don't know why it didn't work last time. Something went weird with it, probably to do with me debugging. Hooray for being able to turn Perry on and off again. All right. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do here. And that is in Twitch Auth. This is going to be um, bool triset tokens. And so this is going to be pass JSON payload. OK. Um, so I've refactored that out into pass JSON payload. Um, try and this is going to return false why would you um, json equals default uh, return true So then up here we're going to say if try pass JSON payload ID token out var JSON. And we can just put this up here because we don't. Um, we're going to say username equals. But we're also going to get. Um, the exp value out of there. Mm. 
not twitch auth dot triset tokens id token access token so now we're basically saying if any either of them are empty um, and we can tidy the code up here by making these nullable and then we can just say if uh, string dot is null or empty id token or string dot is null or empty access token return false and so this can just become that and then Um, so I'm just going to jump into here and we're going to the developer tools and we're grabbing that Twitch ID token and we're going to the JWT.io so I can remind myself what it's called. And so this is when the token expires um, as a JavaScript number of milliseconds. So it's a Unix time number of milliseconds since the uh, midnight on the 1st of January 1970. Um, which Dylan will tell you is uh, or used to coerce to false in JavaScript um, because it was the, the number underlying it was zero. Um, so in Twitch auth, um, we can say if JSON dot root element dot try get property exp comma out var exp property, and then we can say. Um, exp property dot if and exp property dot try get in sixty four out long exp. Date time offset dot from Unix time milliseconds. So I'm just going to grab this quickly and go to my C sharp interactive and do date time offset dot from Unix time milliseconds. So guessing that might be seconds then. Yes, that looks more reasonable. Um, So if it's got an EXP and we can pass it and it's expired, then we will re-trigger the, um, the authentication process. And that should work. Okay. So that's pretty solid, actually. 
Um, that's now doing proper authentication via the Twitch a API. Um, and it is um, making Perry work. So that's that's pretty neat. Um, I think that's that's it for tonight. Um, so what we're going to do next time on Tuesday next week is turn this upload new image thing into something really cool and funky. Um, where when you do like choose file and go to pictures and um, no, not those because they're, they're huge. Um, let's go to Dropbox, memes, um, bring it right so when you do that um, we're going to make this a full page thing so the upload new image thing is going to be full page and the choose file and stuff is going to go across the top there um, and once you do it it'll actually display the image so with it um, in the screen um, on a 16.9 uh, um, grid and then as you're editing height or width or top or left it'll preview what's going to happen to the image um, and yeah so you'll be able to say I want it to show there or, or wherever it might be and, and get an idea of where it's actually going to appear on the screen which I think is probably pretty useful um, so yes that's going to stop being a dialogue oh look we've got the button back so yeah um, I'm going to figure out what I broke while I've been mucking about with this but for the time being um, I, I think that's pretty good um, I think we're in a good place so I'm going to stop for tonight because it was a long one on Tuesday um, and it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow so um, if any of you have met or seen my daughter Willow she's just super awesome um, and she it's her birthday tomorrow and I've got to go and inflate helium balloons and things of that nature for her um, after I've got her to go to bed which could be interesting because she's a teenager um, but yes and if you're not aware of my daughter Willow, she is completely awesome and she's spoken at conferences about Unity programming and um, and yes, we're doing a, a computer science GCSE in just by ourselves because, you know, how hard can a computer science GCSE be? Um, right, I'm, I'm waffling. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for stopping by the stream. I hope it was interesting. I think it was quite a fun thing to do. Um, I'm going to push all the code. Um, so git add dot minus a, git commit minus m, add twitch oidc authentication, and then git push. So all those changes have been pushed up to the GitHub um, repo. There's a link to that. The stream elements bot pops in every now and then and says, hey, here you can do these things. Um, there's a Discord as well. And actually what I'm going to do um, on the Discord um, I am already in there. Log in, open Discord. School of Grok. Um, so I'm going to create a new channel called Images. Um, and edit the channel and 
post images in here to get them added to the overlays. So yeah, if you want even more interactivity, um, then join the Discord. Uh, there's that invite link should work. Um, and then there's an images channel. And if you just post GIFs or, or images or whatever in there, um, then I can add them to the, uh, to the overlays. And then you'll be able to spam me with the images that you want to spam me with but in a very controlled way. So please no pictures of pairs or, or anything like that, because we don't do pairs on this channel. Alrighty. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm stopping. I said I was stopping and then I talked for another five minutes, which I tend to do. Um, it's been awesome. Uh, and I will be back on Tuesday next week at seven o'clock UK time, which is currently six o'clock UTC. Um, super fun thing though, the week after that, so Tuesday the 20th, I will not be streaming on my channel because I have been invited to stream on Microsoft's learn.net channel with them and talk about um, GRPC and WCF, which happens at 7.30 UK time. So yeah, that's on the 20th. Um, but yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and, uh, and find out about that. All right. Okay. That's it. Good night. Have great weekends, everybody. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you on Tuesday next week, Tuesday the 13th. Cheers, everyone. Bye.